My name is Dasha Metropolitansky, and I'm a research data scientist at Microsoft Research. If you've ever asked a language model to summarize or answer questions about some documents, you've probably encountered closed domain hallucination. This is when a language model generates content that is not supported by the source material. In other words, there's absolutely no guarantee that the language model's outputs accurately reflect the documents you're interested in. As you can imagine, this is a huge problem, and that's why there's a lot of research on detecting when language models hallucinate. In this video, I'm going to explain why hallucination detection is actually getting harder, where current methods fall short, and how a new method I developed called Veritrail can help. Typically, hallucination detection methods focus on comparing a given language model output against the source material, so they implicitly assume that there's just one output that we're interested in evaluating. But the reality is much more complex. Applications of language models increasingly rely on processes with multiple generative steps, which you can think of as chains of outputs. So a model is prompted to generate some content, which is used as input for another prompt, which in turn feeds into another prompt, and so on until a final output is produced. For example, imagine that you're an analyst and you have thousands of news articles about financial crises, but they're a little bit dense, so you want to summarize them. They don't all fit in a single prompt, so you have to use a multi-step process. You decide to use hierarchical summarization. To illustrate how this works, I'll show just four articles. The process starts with the language model generating a summary for each article, but the summaries still don't fit in a single prompt, so they're grouped, and each group is summarized sequentially. Here, summaries 5 and 6 are used to produce summary 9, summary 7, 8, and 9 are used to produce summary 10. This process of grouping and summarizing continues until a final summary is produced. Now, hierarchical summarization is just one example of a process with multiple generative steps. There are many others. For example, agentic systems are often multi-step. These processes are useful because they can break down complex tasks into smaller, more manageable parts but they have a higher risk of hallucination. Each step is an additional opportunity for errors to arise or propagate. Since hallucinations can be introduced at any point in the process, I would argue that it's not enough to just answer the question, is the final output hallucinated? We also want to know where the hallucination came from, or if the final output isn't hallucinated, how did we get from the source material to the final output? These questions hint at what I call traceability. Traceability has two parts. The first part is provenance. If the final output is not hallucinated, we should be able to trace its path through the intermediate outputs to the source material. The second part is error localization. If the final output is hallucinated, we should be able to trace where the hallucination was likely introduced. Now, in order to provide traceability, we can't just compare the final output against the source material. We need to use the intermediate outputs as well. But current hallucination detection methods don't distinguish between intermediate outputs and the final output. In fact, there's not really any notion of evaluating processes as a whole. And that's why I created Veritrail, the first closed domain hallucination detection method designed to provide traceability for generative processes. One key idea which you can see in this diagram is that we can represent a generative process as a directed acyclic graph. The circles are nodes and they represent text, either the source text or intermediate outputs or the final output. The arrows are edges and they represent input-output relationships. For example, article one was an input for the prompt that generated summary five. Each node is also assigned a stage, which reflects its position in the process. So articles, article summaries, and so on. Veritrail takes in a graph representing a completed generative process. And its goal is to determine whether the final output is fully supported by the source text. Now the final output is usually packed with information, so we start by extracting claims using a system I developed called Claimify. We'll drop a link in the description, but in a nutshell, claims are simple factual statements. For example, this paragraph about the collapse of several US banks contains the sentence, notable examples include Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, the largest and second largest bank failures in American history respectively. There are at least two claims here, the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank is the largest bank failure in American history, and the collapse of Signature Bank is the second largest bank failure in American history. These claims will be verified separately. We'll focus on the first one about Silicon Valley Bank. 
Next, Veritrail identifies the nodes that were used as inputs for the final summary, nodes 9 and 10. These nodes are split into sentences, and each sentence is assigned a unique ID. Then a language model performs evidence selection, which means it returns the IDs of sentences that strongly imply the truth or falsehood of the claim. In this case, it returns ID 16 from node 10, which corresponds to the sentence, This process led to the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, marking the largest bank failure in American history. It also returns a summary of the selected sentences. Based on the evidence, a language model performs verdict generation, where it decides whether the claim is fully supported, not fully supported, or inconclusive. Here, the verdict is fully supported. Next, since evidence was selected from node 10, we're going to check its inputs, nodes 7, 8, and 9. Actually, we just checked node 9 and no evidence was found, so we don't need to check it again. We repeat evidence selection, and we find some relevant sentences in node 8. Silicon Valley Bank is described as one of the largest bank failures in recent American history, and SVB's collapse following a bank run marks the largest American bank failure since the 2008 financial crisis. This time, the verdict is not fully supported. Veritrail allows the user to configure the maximum number of consecutive not fully supported verdicts. Let's assume it was set to two. We've only reached one not fully supported verdict, so we need to perform another iteration. We just finished checking nodes 7 and 8. Even though we only found evidence in node 8, this time we're going to check the inputs for both nodes 7 and 8, which are nodes 3 and 4. Why include node 7? Well, when the latest verdict is not fully supported, it's possible that the evidence selection step missed relevant evidence, and we want to avoid propagating the error. We repeat evidence selection for nodes 3 and 4, and the verdict is still not fully supported. At this point, we've reached two consecutive not fully supported verdicts, which was our maximum. We've also reached the source text, which doesn't have any inputs. So we can stop here and say that the final verdict is not fully supported. That's an example of how Veritrail detects hallucination. Well, you might have noticed that Veritrail narrows the search space as it traverses the graph, and it does this in reverse. So it starts from the final output and it moves towards the source text. This means that Veritrail tends to verify a smaller proportion of nodes the closer it gets to the source text. Nodes closer to the source text tend to be larger. So for example, an article should be larger than its summary. So verifying fewer nodes closer to the source text generally reduces cost. We've benchmarked this process against some common detection methods like natural language inference models and retrieval augmented generation. And we found that Veritrail outperformed these baseline methods. For more details, you can see our paper, which we'll link to in the description. Well, let's start with error localization. When Veritrail determines that a claim is hallucinated, it uses the verdict generation results to identify the stages at which the hallucination was likely introduced. In our example, the claim was not supported by the articles, stage one, not supported by the article summaries, stage two, then suddenly became supported in the next level of summaries, stage three, and was propagated into the final summary. Veritrail would conclude that the hallucination was introduced in stage three. If we ran Veritrail on a larger sample of claims, we could find out which stages are most prone to hallucination. And this is an extremely helpful insight because it means that we can focus on making the highest risk parts of the process more robust. Now for provenance, imagine we had a claim that was found fully supported, so not hallucinated. During evidence selection, Veritrail found supporting sentences from nodes 9, 6, and 2. These sentences and the summaries generated during evidence selection form an evidence trail. The trail establishes provenance because it traces a path from the source material to the final output, which helps us understand how the final output may have been derived. Another benefit of the evidence trail is that it makes it easy for a human to double check Veritrail's verdict. Instead of having to read through all of the nodes myself, I can just check the evidence trail. All right, taking a step back, if there's one key takeaway I wanna leave you with, it's that language models are being used in increasingly complex ways as multi-step processes instead of one-off prompts. I would argue that as complexity increases, so does the need for transparency. And that's exactly what Veritrail is designed to provide. If you have any thoughts, suggestions, ideas, please leave a comment down below. I would love to hear what you think. Thanks so much for watching. Mm -hmm.